yeah, I, it, um, hoo hoo hoo. Hello everybody and welcome back to Teacups and Toadstools. I have this really cool cad mug that kind of matches my aesthetic today, I guess, and it has a plate. So I feel a plate. Who am I? Am I a hooligan? A saucer. Um, really, really quick, the theme of this video is what it is today because I have a really, really exciting announcement that I have been waiting to talk to you about. For the last three weeks, my friends and I have been working on starting a podcast and now that podcast is available for you guys to listen to. It's called Ultra Hope Girls, a Danganronpa podcast, and it's where we're going to be talking about all things Danganronpa. So something fun I found about <laughs> a little bit of research I did. Um, so at one point you see like the brochure in the prologue that it's like graduation class of 2014. Um, that would mean that um, the the characters in mo modern day and today would be around 24 years old, except for Hero who is held back. So he is 31 now. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot about that. that is so <laughs> He's so old. What? <laughs> Me and my two friends from high school, we were like geeking about it and we were like playing through all the games together, you know, in college, kind of keeping in touch. And then we were like, there's not enough content about this game. Like there's no podcast about Danganronpa. Like we need to make a podcast about Danganronpa. And we were all like, yeah, okay. And so we just decided to do it. And so now the podcast is available for you guys to listen to. We're gonna be publishing once a week every Monday. So that's pretty cool. And let's get into this video where I'm gonna talk a little bit about my relationship with Danganronpa and why it is so amazing. So Danganronpa is a visual novel style game which also has some anime series that are based off of it. Um, there are three games in the official series and one spin-off game sort of that deviates from the visual novel style. The games sort of surround the premise of um, the first game at least. There's 15 students and they wake up and they're trapped in a high school that they're supposed to be attending and the principal announces that they're trapped there unless one of them commits the perfect murder and gets away with it. Um, so that's basically the premise. I kind of describe it as a Hunger Games meets murder mystery sort of game and this game actually was the catapult for me sort of changing my mind in a way about what I thought anime was. All anime is is just a different art style to express human stories um, and there are a lot more things that people can do with the animated art style than they can do with live action human art style. And Danganronpa was actually my introduction to all things anime besides the Miyazaki films um, and I fell in love with it when I first watched it when I was 15 and so I wanted to talk about why the series is so brilliant and why there is so much to talk about with Danganronpa. I also really love the series because it feels very theatrical like it's a television show or a game but there it's dramatic the stakes are high and as like a theater performer <laughs> I always love that kind of stuff in the media I consume and so I've always loved that. Another thing about this series that I think makes it really stand out and makes it very unique, especially within the anime canon, is yes, it does play into a lot of anime tropes, anime stereotypes, but a lot of the time it flips the tropes on its head as the story progresses, and every version of the game in the series still challenges and questions the whole style of anime itself, and I think that that is just really neat, and there are not a ton of shows within other genres as well that really are willing to sort of deviate from what has worked for the genre for so long and Danganronpa it does stick with certain tropes but it also wow it really just goes against what the audience expects. I've always said you know if even if you're somebody who isn't really into anime like my friend Maddie who's a co-host with me on the podcast has never really been into anime but I was like girl I know that you're not into anime but you need to check out these games because they're they're great and she ended up loving it and I think that that speaks a lot too like the sort of storytelling tools it uses as well. Another thing about the series that I just think is so spectacular is the specificity of all of the characters in the universe. There are very few that really are very like similar or seem like copycats of other characters from different games like and all of them are so specific and so human and they have things you can sympathize about with a lot of them. Anyway, I wanted to just make a video talking about it. And so what I think I'll say here is um, I'm getting to a point now in the video where I'm going to be talking about like characters that I like, 
um, and it might get into mild spoiler territory. So if you are new to the series and want to play it and don't want any spoilers, I'm going to say now is your time to turn off the video. But um, for those of you still here, here is some info about what I specifically have loved and the characters that I've loved. So if you are going to be an avid listener of Ultra Hope Girls, the Danganronpa podcast, you will know that I am a huge fan of Toko Fukawa. I have always loved her. She is the ultimate literary girl and that is me as you can see by all the books and literally my entire YouTube channel is about writing and reading. <laughs> I've always felt a kinship with her. I've always loved um, her quirks and how she is a really flawed person but in a deeply human and tragic way but also in a way that I, I've, I've grown to have an affection for her. I also just generally I think I love really all of the characters from the first game. I think that out of all the games they're the most well developed and they're just very specific um, and even the characters that don't stick around for as long um, I, I have a clear idea of the kind of people that they are so my thoughts generally on the games in the series the first game I think is my favorite just because it is so classic and it's what I started with and I think that there are a lot of things that that game does that make it feel very grounded whereas I feel like the later games sort of go to very extreme places with a lot of the twists that they have which isn't necessarily a bad thing and it keeps people who are playing again and again on their toes and like not expecting what's going to happen but I do really miss a lot of like you know the classic things that the old game has but I do think that my favorite cases are in the second game and I'm really excited to get to the second game of the podcast so we can talk about the cases there. But yeah when I say that the series really changed my mind about anime it really did. It it showed me that anime is more than just a certain style. It, it, it A lot of it delves a lot deeper and obviously there's different kinds of animes and there's different genres but that is exactly my point there are different genres there are a lot of different things for different people in anime and it's not all just roped under one umbrella <laughs> and so that has really opened the doors and led me to discover a lot of different things but yeah so I hope that you enjoy this little video I love talking about Danganronpa and that is why we're starting a podcast about it so if you want to check out the podcast the link is in the description to our first episode and I am so, so, so excited to dive in this journey with all of you and to share with you this project I've been working on for so long. Um, make sure you subscribe to my channel. I do talk a lot about books and I talk a lot about writing. Um, for those of you new and checking me out for the first time, um, we'll see if maybe some Danganronpa content might leak in here. We don't know. This channel is basically where I talk about whatever I want. <laughs> I just kind of talk about the things I'm obsessed with and so it's gonna vary week to week but you know you stick around for the chaos. You stick around for the very spontaneous and exciting content that I am more than willing to provide. <laughs> Alright well make sure you like this video and comment below if you've played Danganronpa what your favorite games are, who your favorite characters are. I always love to start a conversation because everybody has such unique opinions about this game which I think makes it so fascinating and I think that's why the community is is so active. Check out our podcast. If you're a new fan, if you're an old fan, this is going to be for you. Um, yeah, well, I will talk to you all soon and get excited because I actually have a regular filming schedule coming up. So I know, crazy. I've been so sporadic in my posting. So I think what I'm going to try to do is do Tuesdays are going to be my Nancy Drew video days and then Fridays are going to be like these, this kind of video where I'll talk about books or I'll talk about you know, other things that I generally like, whatever I'm in the mood for, because that's what this channel is, kids. But um, yeah, it's great to have you join me today, and I hope you have a great day. Bye! This is actually this little snow globe right here. I don't know if you can see in there. That's me, and that's my friend Maddie, who I'm doing this podcast with. She gave this to me as a graduation gift from when we graduated high school, um, but I thought you would enjoy that this little Easter egg Maddie's featured in this entire video. So cute. Sorry, Marin is not. Marin, you can be, you can be that doll. This can be you, buddy. <laughs>